Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Silicon video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And like the past few days, this video is going to be very AMD focused, unlike previously, it's been very NVIDIA and Intel focused. So there are a couple of pieces of news. The first is the Intel chips. Yes, I did just say it's going to be AMD focused, but hear me out. Uh, Intel chips will indeed be carrying Vega inside. Now, is this genuine? Well, we're going to be tackling it in this video, but spoiler alert, I don't think it is, but I do want to tackle the rumor before it starts to gain too much ground. And last, and that is the supposed launch date of Navi, because it's looking to be around August 2018, and we also have a few technical details as well. But, as I said, first things first, let's deal with the whole Intel thing with Vega inside, shall we? So there's a website by the name of NLT, Nasal uh, Mac Tech, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, and an image has popped up on that website which claims that the image was originally found somewhere else, but it's an Intel chip with Vega graphics inside. Now, the image origin, uh, from what I can tell anyway, I've only found it on this website as the source. You might find differently. If you do, uh, feel free to contact me and let me know, but I can't find an origin point before this. The image is absolutely minuscule. I mean, we're talking with 8-bit computers will probably have a higher color depth and probably more on-screen uh, pixels than what this image has. It's absolutely minuscule. And really and truly, the only thing you could see is Vega inside. Now, to be honest with you, this is probably one of the easiest ways you can fake an image because A, it's obviously at an obscure angle, B, it's a very low resolution image, and C, because everything else is blurred, you can just basically use whatever slides you want. And uh, obviously, uh, even the dude in the background could just be like a stock image. It's very easy to fake this type of thing. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure anyone who has a passing knowledge of Photoshop, you know, could probably just figure out what uh, fonts Intel use and then just go from there. However, but besides the point, is this genuine? My opinion, probably no. A um, couple of reasons. One, it's suspicious to me that such a small website, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, because, you know, small websites do sometimes get exclusive. Sometimes, you know, John, who happens to run a, a small website or a small YouTube channel, whatever, can just so happen to know someone somewhere or just gets very lucky. The other thing, and this one's probably bigger for me, is I just don't really think that Intel would do this at this point. Now, don't forget, Intel did definitely um, need a company so that they could produce GPUs. Um, that's, of course, internal GPUs, not discrete ones that you plug into a PCIe slot. Now, the reason they need that pattern is so they don't get sued. Um, Vast is simplifying this for this video because we've talked about it a few times in the past, so you can go ahead and check those videos out. But I do think there's some truth that Intel may... Um, end up licensing GPU technology, but Intel have flat out said that it's not doing that. It's not, um, you know, going to be putting uh, AMD GPUs or anything like that inside its inside its, uh, inside its CPUs. So we're just going to have to see what happens in terms of whether it's just a licensing deal, whether they end up really putting GCN technology inside Intel's processors, which I highly doubt. There have been a couple of 3 Mark images or slash uh, 3 Mark entries, but from what I understand, from my due diligence, all of those have turned out to be running with a discrete graphics card. In other words, they're not the iGPU. So it looks like this is not happening anytime soon. Right, um, I'm going to move over to the next rumor because quite frankly, I don't think there's enough... Um, I, I'll just use the word probability that this is genuine for me to really do more analysis on this. But I'll keep an eye on the rumor, but, you know, so far I don't think there's much point in stoking the flames. However, I will talk about another rumor, and this one I feel is much more likely to be genuine. There's an interesting report published by Tweaktown, and I'll read this out verbatim. It's quite a short quote. Once again, I have an exclusive story, this is them talking of course, that AMD will have Navi ready sometime in July to August 2018 with a Navi-based professional card launching at SIGGRAPH 2018. We're still waiting for AMD to launch the Radeon Pro SSG, something they unveiled during SIGGRAPH 2017 that yet just hasn't seemed to materialise. So there are a couple of notes which do kind of confuse me. The first is we're hearing a lot of talk, of course, about the Vega refresh. Now, that's a 12nm 
uh, Vega Refresh. And essentially, it's basically what you'd expect. This is not, you know, an increment of Vega. This is just them tweaking the architecture. This is just a small improvement. This is obviously going to reduce power consumption, reduce heat, and, well, hopefully increase clock speeds as well. And probably more important than that, possibly iron out uh, a few uh, issues with the uh, GPU and possibly just increase the overall efficiency. So if that room is true, and let's say that happens within the first three months, then I think people are going to be pretty damn annoyed if then we start seeing Navi. So there's a couple of options. The first is that Navi is going to be a, I don't know, paper launch, or Navi is only going to be for the bleeding edge. It's going to be for the very high-end cards, and much like Volta with NVIDIA, it'll take a while before it finally filters down to average users. So there are a couple of other notes, and these are not necessarily technical issues with Navi. Instead, they're just a few observational things. One of those is that you'll have noticed scalability, along with next-gen memory. Now, I'm not quite sure what next-generation memory could mean with Navi, because they're still having issues, quite frankly, with HBMM, HBM excuse me, 2, so I don't know what they're going to do there. However, scalability is pretty obvious. It, of course, relates to um, multi-chip modules. Now, this is something that NVIDIA are already uh, kind of analyzing and looking at, and I actually discussed this earlier this year. In fact, there's a really interesting research paper. You can Google this yourself. You can search for uh, MCM NVIDIA, and it'll pop right up uh, to their official web page, or I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. But essentially, they believe, and I'll, I'll quote this verbatim, most importantly, the optimized MCM GPU design is 45.5% faster than the largest implementable monolithic GPU and performs within 10% of a hypothetical and unbuil unbuildable excuse me, monolithic GPU. Lastly, we show that our optimized MCM GPU is 26.8% faster than an equally equipped multi-GPU system with the same number of total SMs and DRAM bandwidth. For those wanting a translation of that, it's pretty damn simple. They're saying that if you go multi-chip, think AMD Threadripper, it's very similar. If they were to build a system like that, it not only outperforms about 25% faster, as you just as I just read, than a system. Let's just say for the sake of argument, you have 2560 CUDA cores. Uh, obviously, you have way more than that, but let's just use an easy number where we can kind of dissect it and do some maths as the target. Well, you can achieve that in multiple different ways. One is you have a couple of different GPUs, discrete GPUs, a multi-GPU system. Each of those, of course, would have 1,280 of uh, CUDA cores total. Or the other way of doing it might be to have 640 CUDA cores in four different modules, a GPU module, if you will, and that would be this uh, multi-chip module GPU die. Each of these modules, of course, intercommunicates with one another, along with the various caches and, ma and memory. But yes, I am vastly simplifying this, because it's not supposed to be a fully tech analysis type of video. And in theory, at least, you get much better performance reduced power consumption and in theory at least it makes it a lot easier to build because you just reduce the chance that let's say that you have one of these GPU modules which fails that's fine because you've not assembled it yet you produce the modules independently and then you can just assemble everything later on on the other hand if you're producing a larger die let's say once again 2560 well what happens if just 64 of those, one of those clusters is dead? So 64 CUDA cores is done. Well, in which case, the most obvious thing is then you have to take in binning to consideration. And if you were to look at it from the perspective of NVIDIA, that would mean that a GTX 1080 would no longer be a 1080. You would have to utilize the same core, which it does, as the 1070. And that's basically what we're going to get. So in AMD's case, it does make an awful lot of sense that they would do something very similar. Finally, don't forget that there are multiple reports from um, different websites that AMD will indeed be still using Global Foundries. 
but it will be on the 7NM process. This has been reported a couple of times. And Glowflow, Global Foundries, will in fact be ramping up their 7NM production in the second half of 2018, with the first products hitting the first half of 2018. In other words, these time frames are not they're not ridiculous. They may well make some sense. But how all of this really comes to to pass and whether this is actually accurate or not, well, I'll leave that to your imagination. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.